even though this is a very old setup for being on the trail, um, with these modern implements, I find this a really good, cheap, versatile, reliable alternative to an expensive backpack. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap, and today I thought I'd do a video talking about homemade pack frames. So, the backpack is an essential element, an essential part of your kit when you're going out in the woods, especially for long-term trips. And there's a lot of options for backpacks. Um, there's the kind with the external pack frame, and then there's the type with the internal pack frame, which are the most popular. Um, you know, if you go to um, a place like uh, Mountain Equipment Co-op, or you know any, any sort of outdoors place, it's actually really hard to find an external pack frame these days. They're all internal, and they're very comfortable to carry, but <clears throat> they're limited in the sense that you can only put in it what'll go in it. They're really not built for strapping things onto them. I mean, to some extent you can do that, but they're not built for it the way a pack frame is. Um, you can still buy pack frames. Um, there's really flimsy, cheap ones you can buy, and then there's unbelievably expensive ones you can buy. Uh, but another option is to just make one. And they're not hard to make. So this one here, and I'm unique, I'm six foot four, I'm quite tall. So I actually have a hard time finding uh, frames that fit me, things that fit properly. Uh, I have an internal frame pack that I bought years ago that I, I still use. Um, that's the right size for me. It was basically someone for, built for someone with a long torso. Um, so the dimensions of this one I sort of I based on how that one's put together. Um, the great thing the great thing about a homemade pack frame is that it's custom made for your height, your dimensions. You just make it the way you want. So it's really not adjustable, but it doesn't need to be adjustable. Okay, the other thing is that it is adjustable in a sense in that you can make it whatever way you want it. It can be the way you want it to be. And the great thing about these really old fashioned external type pack frame is that they're they're very versatile because you can use it for lots of things, right? You can use it to carry all your gear, or you can also use it to carry just about anything on your back, right? Anything you don't want to carry in your hands. So if you've got that out in the woods and you've got some other thing you've got to lug, you can use it for that. It's very handy. If you want to carry a chainsaw deep into the woods to do some chainsaw stuff, you can just attach to a pack frame like this as opposed to carrying your hands and burning out your shoulders and stuff like that. All right, so let me show you how this went together. The basic material is just spruce one by three. This is, it looks like walnut because I just stained it with walnut stain, okay? That was like a wood preservative, right? Um, now the dimensions, I think I did this all with one piece, right? You can get a piece of one by three for, I don't know, five bucks or something like that. So we got, that's about 31 inches. The, the long pieces are 31s and the short pieces are 14s, right? I got three shorts and two 31s. That's a little bit more than a than an eight footer. So I must use more than more than one piece, but just slightly more than one piece, right? Basically, if you had just a little bit of wood kicking around, you could finish it off with about one piece. And I mean, this one's extra long for my anatomy, right? I'm six foot four, I need, I need length, right? Um, great thing about just these old fashioned style pack frames is that they're, almost infinitely repairable, right? I mean, so this one's put together. All I have is each point of attachment on the back side. So not the side that goes, on the side against my back, I've got this uh, uh, inner tube rubber. I'll talk about that later. But on the side where everything's lashed to, right? I just have two, uh, just, or four, four wood screws. And I pre-drilled so it wouldn't split. Four screws here, four screws here, and so on and so forth. And I glued it as well. Okay. But if anything were to go wrong with a setup like this, you just duct tape, use duct tape or paracord to repair it, right? <laughs> it's very easy to repair on the trail, right? I'm on the go. Uh, I guess in a, in a pinch, you could use a spruce, spruce root or something like that, right? So, you know, if anything does go wrong with these things, it's very easy to fix. So anyway, I got the spruce one by three, two thirty ones and three fourteens, just screwed in with wood screws. Uh, down here, these are these little hook things you can get 
at the dollar store. You can get a pair of them for like two bucks. So I just put two of those hook things on here. And then I just duct tape another piece of 14 inch long uh, one by three to have sort of a bottom for things to fit against. Okay. Now the webbing, this is just from an old backpack that I saw someone had thrown out on the street. I was just driving to work and I saw a backpack in someone's trash and I grabbed it and I just cut this, cut the webbing off. And it even had the uh, chest strap in front, everything intact and fully adjustable. And it had nice, relatively thick, thick pads. I mean, you want to err on the thickest pads you can get. But this sort of thing is really easy to get. I mean, if you're waiting to find someone in someone's trash, that might not happen. But people sell used backpacks all the time on Kijiji. And sometimes you can get up for 10, 20 bucks. Sometimes you can get really high quality used backpacks that are just kind of trashed and dirty for next to nothing on Kijiji. I've got one like that that I use to carry all our uh, sort of skin diving equipment around in. Um, it's just big enough for me to carry. Sometimes you can get one that's, it's maybe not the right size, but the webbing is perfectly fine in terms of its size, right? So you can get that stuff really cheap. Uh, this here strap I actually got, it didn't have the clips on it. Okay, I got these clips. I just, the backpack that I ripped this webbing off, I took the, the clips off of that. But this actual, uh, you know, hip webbing, I bought at an Army Navy store. Um, there's one near where I live and it's just got a bucket full of webbing, all kinds of random webbing for five bucks a piece. All right, so that's where I got this, right? So you can get the webbing for, you know, pretty cheap if you know where to look for it. Usually Army Navy stores have all kinds of the stuff. They just have buckets of, uh, buckets of it just kicking around right off of other backpacks or for different things. Okay, and all I did with this webbing was I, I just attached it with, I just screwed it on with a screw and a washer. Okay, so uh, pretty easy. I see it's missing one here, but anyway, pretty easy to attach, right? Um, this one here, you could, if you wanted for extra comfort, put some foam across here, right? I usually use this in the, when it's in the colder months, so I have like jackets on and stuff like that, so it's fine. But if I was using it for summer hike, I would just duct tape on some foam across here just so it doesn't rub against your, your lower back because you're bearing some weight down there. Now, in terms of uh, how you attach things to it, you've got all kinds of options, right? Oh, and how did I attach the webbing at the top here? Um, you know, the webbing, I just duct taped it on in the center and put a screw through it. <laughs> Okay, on the on the back side, not the side that goes against against me, right? This is the part that goes towards me, the part that's the part that's against my back, right? So this is on the side everything's lashed to, right? So contrary to proper belief, uh, you know, intuitively you think the straps should go on the sides like this, but they shouldn't. They should be behind your neck and go around your neck like that for proper form. If you look at any backpack, that's how they're put together. You know, if you're Throwing one of these together and you're unsure what to do, just look at a look at a real backpack and sort of copy it, right? Uh, same with the dimensions. The length between here and where the, where this is, where this strap is, is based on another backpack that I have that's comfortable for me. But but it's basically the length from the top of your shoulders to you know your hip bone, I guess, where your waist meets your hip bone, just above. The round part of your butt, right? Because that's where it's going to sit, right? When you strap it in, your weight's going to be the weight's going to be sitting on top of that, right? You don't want it, you don't want when you're walking your your legs kicking against it and stuff like that, okay? Uh, now, what's all this? Uh, this is just inner tube. You go to any bike shop, you can get inner tube for uh, nothing. Because they just throw it away, so they'll just go there with a grocery bag and say, Can you fill this with a little inner tube and they'll do it for you? So I put this inner tube just to sort of go against my back. Um, and, but it's also handy just for sticking things in it. Or if you've got to carry an axe or something like that, you can just stick it in. All right, it's kind of handy as extra, extra webbing, extra uh, attachment points, that sort of thing. But the main reason I had it on there was so that I could go against my spine 
and sort of keep it in place. And it actually works really well. When I initially built, built this, I thought of putting a pool noodle on the part of this that goes against my back along the length for comfort. But I found this is just fine the way it is. Um, if I was doing a long hike in summer, just wearing a t-shirt, I might do that, right? But anyway, I use this in the colder months. Use it during deer season, really. Um, now, options for putting all your gear on there. Well, there, it's completely limited to your uh, imagination. Um, what I like to do is I like to have these dry bags. Right, you can put one there, another one, another one. I find like maybe two of these. It's good for an overnighter. Three if you're going for a weekend, <laughs> maybe more if you're going for longer, depends on how much gear you brought and how, how heavy you travel. Uh, the great thing about this modular approach is you put the heavy stuff at the bottom, the light stuff at the top, right? You can even, you can have three and a fourth one, right? I like to keep the weight low, just easier, more comfortable, right? You can see I got some extra quarters just strapped onto the top because this isn't functional, it's just a place to store quarters because you never know when you're going to need a little extra cordage, right? For attaching these, um, I just use bungee cords, but you could use twine or whatever. You'll notice I've got these little, you know, they're just little looped pieces of string, right? Rope, uh, cordage, right? So you can just string them through like that. And this is just an attachment point for bungee cords. Right, so I've always got about six of these, right? So you know you don't need this if you're using uh, twine, but it can still or um, cordage, but it can still be handy. But for bungee cords, because they got those hooks, there's really nothing for them to. I mean, you can kind of hook them into the wood, but they don't really. It's not as reliable. So I like to use these just for hooking bungee cords when you're when you're strapping it all up. How you attach it is there's a thousand different ways to do it. it really depends on what you're carrying and. And, and its dimensions and so on and so forth, right? But you can carry just about anything on these. You can carry six foot long pieces of wood, right? You, you know, it's really limited to your imagination, right? But the versatility of this, if you're going in the winter, right? You could have your, your dry bags on there, have a pair of snowshoes on there just in case you need them, right? Get into soft snow. Um, another approach is you've got your your tarp that goes over all your gear and just throw your tarp on the ground throw everything in the tarp bundle the tarp up strap it onto the pack throw it on your back right quick breakdown of camp uh not really uh you know if, if you like a, a hasty <laughs> a hasty breakdown of camp without messing around with little little bags like this right you can just throw everything on top of a tarp bundle the tarp up you know being careful to do it in a way that it doesn't unravel, which is, there's all kinds of videos and I have to do that on YouTube. Um, and then just strap it onto the pack and go, right? That's another simple way to do it, right? So, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd show that. This is sort of ideal. I was just in Mech the other day, and I'm not trying to dump on them. I was looking for a, a backpack for one of my kids, and I just couldn't get over the price of backpacks. It was insane, right? And then I thought, you know, that one I made, which I've had this for, I don't know, five, six years. Um, I use it whenever I want to use it, whenever I need it. I usually use it during deer season. I've never really had any complaints with this. It's very handy. It's very modular. Um, yes, you can use dry bags, but I also have, you know, you have most internal, pain fr uh, internal frame backpacks. They've got like a little detachable ditty bag on the top. It's almost like a purse, right? That's on the top that you can usually detach for like day trips. Detach and use like a fanny pack. Well, you can just buy a fanny pack, which I love fanny packs for being in the woods, and just strap it around here. Just, you can literally, almost like pretending this is the waist, right? You can just attach a fanny pack to the top of this thing, and there you go. There you've got your little ditty bag for day trips. You know, you go out in the woods for you know, two, three, four days, you want to go just, you know, you want to leave your camp to do some fishing or whatever, and you just want to bring a little pack with you with a, some water and a snack and a few, uh, a few essentials, you, right? You've got that little thing you can detach from this sticker on your waist or sling, maybe it's a haversack, you sling it over your shoulder, whatever, right? But it is nothing to attach a haversack or a ditty bag or a, 
a fanny pack just around the top of this thing, right? So you've got, and if you get that for easy access too, because you know, you're on the trail, you want to stop for lunch, you, wanna, you don't want to go digging into dry bags or dismantling your entire tarp kit, right? Uh, you have a few things in just a little easy access bag for snacks along the trail or first aid or, you know, whatever you need that for, right? So you just sling that over the top. It's a piece of cake. So even though this is a very old setup for being on the trail, um, with these modern implements, right, proper shoulder pads, chest strap, waist strap for bearing weight, right, everything's cushioned and padded, you get you get the reliability and versatility of an old system. The unbelievable cheapness of that. I mean, you can build one of these for 30 bucks, right? <laughs> or less, right? You're really cheap. Um, you get, and remember, right up until, you know, very recently, this sort of thing was all people used. And when you had people that basically lived in the woods, like uh, Collier de Bois, or fur trappers, or, you know, people like that, all they had was pack frames, right? They weren't going to mech getting nylon internal pack frames with, you know, you know, that straw that comes out, you know, all that sort of stuff. Nobody had any of that stuff. You know, when, when survival in the woods was real, isolated, on your own, you know, uh, rugged individual type survival, this is what people were using. And they didn't have the advantage of all these extra comfortable things, you know, that you could attach. Right? They might have just had like a piece of animal skin or something like that. I'm sure they could rig it up in ways that are comfortable. So, yeah, I find this a really good, cheap, versatile, reliable alternative to an expensive backpack. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the Roycroft pack frame. Uh, there's a lot of talk about that pack frame in bush bushcraft forums. Um, I see that as a useful, quick to lash together emergency pack frame. It's comfortable for what it is. It's basically like a triangle, you know, you have three sticks and you make a triangle, right? The fat part of the triangle goes out your back, the pointy part of the triangle goes at your top, and you just, you, you know, you, 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 you use some cordage to put it over your shoulders. Okay, so that's not... It's a, it's a useful form of pack frame, but it's not one you would, ch for me anyway, if I've, I've played around with them, it's not one I would choose if I had an option like this, right? It's what you throw together when you got nothing and you need a pack frame. It's a great pack frame if you've got nothing and you want to throw one together quickly using limited time and resources and materials. That's where the Roycroft pack frame comes in. But if you want something, I mean, there's a reason this sort of thing is what people <laughs> use in militaries and, you know, explorers use stuff. Like, there's a reason this design has sort of stood the test of time, right? Because it's sort of the best way to, to rig something up. And I'm sure there's arguments about the width, the length, what's optimal, that sort of thing. I mean, you, you play with stuff and, and you really don't know until you build one of these and you go on a long hike with it, you know? Wear it for 30 minutes, wear it for an hour, wear it for two hours. See how that works for you, <laughs> right? You'll know. You'll, you'll know where the, where the design's wrong with time, right? And then the great thing about something like this, you just get out your screwdriver and make a few little adjustments. Get it the way you want it, right? Throw one of these together. Go for an afternoon hike with it on, right? Then, you know, based on your, your insights, in terms of how it fit, how it rode, how it carried weight. Uh, take it out for, you know, a bit longer trip with more weight in it, right? Then maybe do an overnighter with it, see how that works. I would not throw one of these together and then fly to some exotic location expecting to use this for a month for key survival, right? Untested. You, you have to work out the bugs and get it the way um, you want it. But the great thing is with a bit of time, you can do that. You just tinker with it till you get it the way you want it. And you get a very versatile, reliable, cheap <laughs> pack frame. So anyway, uh, yeah, just a few thoughts on homemade pack frames, uh, why it makes sense to do it, how I did mine, uh, and recommendations for if you want to try doing one of those. It's way cheaper than buying a backpack and you'll, you'll get the usefulness 
and maybe even more versatility than a very expensive backpack for you know 20 30 bucks so uh i recommend giving it a try anyway i hope you found that interesting if you did please like share subscribe and until next time enjoy the outdoors on the cheap thanks for watching <laughs>